think there'll ever be another vocal band like the Beach Boys. <laughs> It was not only just the melodies, but it was the way they were performed, it was the way they were delivered, the way they were, the picture was painted of the songs. If you care to get into it, then it's the most rewarding musical experience I've ever had. The Beach Boys have created the first big wave, you know, surf was up when we were around. And we sang come from Liverpool. Why did that happen there? You know, you can talk about it endlessly, but the fact is that this magical thing happened between four people in that part of the country. Well, something equally magical happened in Southern California. And my grandmother, Wilson, told me stories about uh, when they first came to California from Kansas, how they actually camped on the beach in like Huntington Beach and Seal Beach area. Uh, there, it was during the Depression in the 30s, and they didn't have any money. And they literally camped on the beach. In that man, People were excited to get back in the workforce and do things, and orange groves turned into little houses. I think people had fun. They, I think they were more optimistic about life. taught my mom how to play and then he would write songs and she would play along with him and it was like a husband wife team it was just they were really great he, he was an inspiration to melody like his melodies were real pretty you know they really got to me very deeply in my soul because he was like he taught me how to play that friday nights he could his paycheck he worked at uh, air research so the three of us would be in the backseat singing away and that's, actually, that's the birth of the three brothers singing together at an early age. And there were moments when we'd be singing harmony together that my father would just fall down crying with joy. I think when I was about nine, eight or nine, Brian would ask me to sing, and if I didn't want to, he'd, he'd have my mom make me sing with him. In that sunshine. The relationship was... My mom is the, the sister of the, the Wilson's father, Uncle Murray. The relationship between the Wilsons and the Loves was similar to the Hatfields and McCoys. <laughs> and if nobody knows about that, it was a, a relationship in the Appalachians where they would shoot at each other. But there was one time a year at least, maybe a couple times a year, but one time a year in particular when, uh, when uh, the families would get together and there was sort of like a truce. And that was Christmas time. <laughs> And that's when we would do all our Christmas carols and get together musically. And after the Christmas carols were done, we'd segregate into age groups and do uh, music that was, uh, uh, you know, of the time. For me, the, I, I really like the R&B music that was being played on some of the couple of radio stations in L.A. as we were growing up. Rock and roll. Little Richard, Pat's Domino. Chuck Berry influenced us a lot, obviously. We would do Everly Brothers, which are two-part harmonies, in three and four parts sometimes. Four freshmen. Uh, jazz quartet.
quartet, you know, from the 50s, uh, was Brian's favorite group, and he was way heavy into it. Oh, I immediately took to, to the sound of their, of their voices, and I, I started learning their harmonies. The breeze began to fade Like promises we made How could a love that seemed so right go wrong The things we did last summer simultaneously and be able to deal him to the different individuals who could handle that range. He was quite gifted in that way. Still is, actually. I saw Brian in concert with his little brother, Carl. And I was quite impressed with what I heard. I thought the arrangements that they were doing were kind of sophisticated, you know. I pursued him to think about doing some singing. And because at the time, we had no basis in that at all. We were just pals on the football field. I'm over at the Foster's Freeze one the summer after we graduated, and I said, let's get together and do something. I think the Beach Boys music encompassed that, that background condition of, you know, of, of being a kid in Southern California. I was into surfing. I was into cutting class and sneaking off to the beach, and I just said, uh, sing about surfing. Dennis was an avid surfer, and he brought home the idea to, to Brian hey, you guys ought to write a song about surfing. Because at the time, I don't think Dennis was in the group. He was always kind of floating on the periphery, you know, because he didn't, didn't, he was always gone surfing or, or, you know, raising heck somewhere. Mike started out with, he had an idea for it. And then I went, surfing, surfing, because the background still when you have the Beach Boy style was born. Made up the song in very short order. And it sounds like a song made up in very short order. <laughs> Surfing is the only life, the only way for me. So come along, baby, and surf. Actually, the first time the Beach Boys got together as a as a band to run business. Only thing, one thing we lacked were instruments. Since, so he naturally became the official guitar player. Dennis, by virtue of the fact that he didn't play anything at all, uh, became the drummer. I was defined as a bass player, and thin and sear, I might add, because my mother had to rent the equipment for us. We ran a stand-up bass, and a drums, and a guitar. I remember the rehearsals. I mean, they were great. Our rehearsals were terrific. In fact, we had a little party. You know, the police came. A lot of people showed up. It was really... Uh, I, I don't remember how they knew to come, but there were a lot of people. And then the Wilsons came home, and they said, wow, that's pretty good, you know? And uh, we had to go down and record that. Our father loved the music so much that he gave up his business, he put all his money into the group, and he really legitimately loved it. I got up this morning, turned on my radio. I was checking out the surfing scene to see if I would go. I think it was on the weekend they had this thing where they introduced new records every weekend on the Saturday show. And people would call in. And we kept calling, rotating our voices, making them change to one voice to another. And we did like 20 calls. And they go, and this week's winner is surfing. And we go, wow! From the early morning till the middle of the night, any time the surf is up, the shine is right. And when the surf is down to take its place, well, to the surfer stop, it's the latest dance craze. <laughs> After that song, we uh, went back to the drawing boards and came up with Surf and Safari and, and uh, 409. And on the basis of those songs, Capitol Records heard those and signed us. When we're ready to sing, we step up at the microphones and it comes out something like this. VH1's Vinyl Justice. If your taste in music is criminal, might get jiggy with this section right here. You're busted. Nobody is above the law. Vinyl Justice, every Tuesday, premieres this Tuesday at 9.30, only on VH1. Get revolutionary color and make it last with Revlon Nail Enamel. 
up to seven long days of Stay True Color, seven long days of Shine, up to seven long days of chip resistance without peeling. Revlon Nail Enamel, in more fashion colors than anyone. More revolutionary colors that last seven long days. This time, Revlon really nailed it. Revlon. At America's top university, the most gifted mind belongs to the guy who cleans the floors. I need someone who can get through to them. Now he's met the one man who can change his life forever. Let's let the healing begin. Coming to pay-per-view, the winner of two Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay and Best Supporting Actor Robin Williams. You are bound by nothing. Siskel and Ebert gave it two big thumbs up. Robin Williams, Matt Damon, and Minnie Driver. I love you. Goodwill Hunting, coming to pay-per-view, rated R. Want to work in advertising or graphic design? How about a career creating hot TV commercials or cool computer art? Fall classes begin September 3rd at San Francisco's Academy of Art College. Call us today at 1-800-544-ARTS. No more excuses. Zyban is here. Prescription medicine, only available from your doctor. Ask your doctor about Zyban or call 1-888-650-PILL to find out more. Zyban, now you have another choice. These are my friends. They have good reason to be happy, because their college IDs are now worth 10% off cool stuff at Pier 1. So get smart. Head to Pier 1 and get what you need. Just show your ID for 10% off. Pier 1 imports a major college requirement. From the writer of Braveheart, in an era of revolution. I am a young king, but I am king. Then be a good king. A man of courage made a choice between loyalty and treason. The man in the Iron Mask rent the adventure tonight. It began as the product of meticulous Japanese design, but it was sent to Europe for finishing school. It was tested on Austria's Alpine roads, refined on Germany's autobahns, and chased on England's racetracks. Now the car that's proven itself in Europe is crossing the pond. Introducing the all-new Infiniti G20. Born in Japan, educated in Europe, now available in America. How you doing, Sarge? Okay, folks, what'll it be? What would you like, sweetheart? A Pepsi, please. Sorry, we only have Coke. Now nah, you've done it. You're sorry? Not half as sorry as you're gonna be. I ordered a Pepsi, pal. She's got a mind of her own. What's with this guy? Look, I just thought... You thought? What you really thought was that I don't know the difference between Pepsi and a Coke, right? Here's your Pepsi. Thank you. Mmm. Kids say the darndest things. What are you looking at? I like this place. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how Come on a safari with me Come on a safari with me Huntington and Malibu, they're shooting the beer And Rincon, they're walking the nose We're going on safari to the island this year So if you're coming, get ready to go Come on, baby, wait to fall Yes, I'm gonna take you surfing with fall We were, uh doing some touring, uh, quite a bit of touring in the, in the south, uh, southern California, and it was taking a little too much time out of my uh, uh, studies. And so Al kind of quit to go back to finish his education because uh, he didn't see it going anywhere. I was on the first five albums with him. But Al came back after the first tour. Brian didn't want to tour. He hated it. It wasn't the same then as it is now. It's uh, cramping in the back of a rented station wagon, five people, and, and driving all that. We had to drive between gigs. You know, some of them were as much as 800 miles. So it was really grueling. Uh, not like now where we just hop the plane, go play for an hour, and then back to the hotel. You know, it's like real cushy now. But it was really hard work in the 60s. We heard you know, one of the very first songs on, on the radio, probably Surfing or Surfing Safari, one of those. And it sounded a lot like what we were doing. And quite frankly, we were flattered that somebody else thought what we were doing was good enough to copy. So I called up Brian. Brian said, well, you want to hear our, our next release? I said, oh, yeah, sure, absolutely. If everybody had ocean across the USA. So Brian sits down at the piano and starts playing a kind of sweet little 16, but he's singing, if everybody had an ocean across the USA. And we're going like, wow. Tell the teacher we're serving. 
Serving USA. Hang your keys and walk inside outside. New Pacific Palace inside outside. New We're sailing over Yanson inside outside. New We're down to detail inside outside. New All over the hall inside outside. New And why in the Bay inside outside. Everybody's gone surfing. Serving USA. That sort of signaled the start of this whole surfing era where you had, you know, people, people who were... Little kids in Australia, um, grow growing up in places like Surfers Paradise and, and Sydney, uh, was the Beach Boys. Everybody on the beach, you'd always hear Beach Boys records, like Surfer Girl particularly. The, the harmonies used to blow us away. Like, How do these guys do that? The stuff about surfing, I you know, I, I, it's only later I found out that, you know, it was only Dennis that surfed, you know, I was like... We were quite willing to believe that it was all really what they did. Nah, I was scared. I tried one time, uh, and the board missed my head like, that far. The board dropped out, and I, I never tried again. <laughs> of Americans. Right now we'd like to show you how the Beach Boys go about making a record. We start with Denny Wilson on the drum. Followed by Al Jardine on rhythm guitar. Helped out by Carl Lead Guitar Wilson. Filled out instrumentally by our leader, Brian Wilson, on the bass. <laughs> when we're ready to sing, we step up at the microphones, and it comes out something like this. Walk 
our surfing songs did great. Surfing USA was number one in New York and L.A., but the car songs, the flip sides, Shut Down and 409 and Little Deuce Coo, those songs had wheels on them. You could figure, okay, the coast, surfing. Everybody else is landlocked, we figured. Cars. And if that ain't enough to make you flip your lid, there's one more thing I got the thing slipped at it. I remember the first time we heard girls scream and we thought there was a fire. <laughs> we looked at Sacramento, the, the girls' mice. What an embarrassing trip. We had a series of what we called double-sided hits. The hits came so fast that we were our worst competition, our best, most fierce competition. has taken over as the kingpins of musical appreciation among the younger element. Tuesday, VH1's got more. More acting debuts. Dad, you said I could have a cow of my own. Can I have this one? More singing debuts. And of course, more yodeling. More moments they'd rather forget. I'm proud to say I'm a Baltimore and all new Before They Were Rock Stars kicks off VH1's premiere night, Tuesday at 8, 7 central, only on VH1, where music comes first. Your toothbrush can clean the surfaces of teeth, but may not get to the spaces between. Listerine can. Listerine flows into the tiny spaces between teeth to kill germs and help prevent the gum disease, gingivitis. Get in there and fight with Listerine. On September 1st, you can own the experience that captivated the world. Take the voyage home on video cassette. Titan.
with Millennium Funk Party on Rhino CDs and cassettes. To order, call the number on your screen or send check a money order for the amount shown, plus shipping and handling to the address above. Matchbox 20. Live in Memphis. Saturday night, September 26th. Live at the Pyramid. Matchbox 20 with special guest Paula Cole. Pick up tickets on sale now through Ticketmaster, or Atlas, or Phone Chai. Matchbox 20, September 26th at the Pyramid in Memphis. A Fever production. If you've ever wanted a big screen, now is the time, and Dill Day TV is the place. Right now, you can get 12 months, save as cash, on any big screen TV at Dill Day TV, the Mid-South's home of the big screen. That's right, no interest for one full year. Dill Day TV has a huge selection of big screens from Mitsubishi, Pioneer, Sony, and Zenith. At Dill Day, you'll find everything you need for a complete home theater system. Come on into Dill Day and get the big screen TV you want, and take advantage of 12 months, no interest. Dill Day TV, 6281 Winchester and 7545 Highway 64 across from Brother. I learned by watching engineers, I learned by, learned by watching people produce, and uh, just learned how to do it. It was unprecedented before the Beach Boys for a pop band to have autonomous control in the studio. Well, the impression that we got was that this is just a young rock and roll kid. I mean, he was just a baby. Yeah, I thought he was very slow. <laughs> and he was. You had all those rock and surf groups back then, and we were doing the records like for them all. Brian, though, had something special for, from the start. It was very early on that we started, after hearing finished product, that's when we started realizing there's some genius here. Brian did something very, very different then. You know, it wasn't just, uh, I mean, it was, it was some music with intelligence. You know, it was the rock and roll Mozart, man, you know. And he kept getting better and better and better. There's a Yep. 
came up with the idea for it, and I told Brian, and they said, well, we got to start like a Chuck Berry song. We were in Australia. Australia? We were yeah. in Salt Lake City. When we were fun, fun, fun? When we came up with the idea, it was in fun, in the Mike, cab. Your, your in Salt Lake memory City. is getting senile. No, yours is. No, <laughs> as you can see, we agree on everything. I think if they were in high school, and for some reason, you know, Brian was more of the scientific kind of guy, and Mike Love was the all-around Mr. Cool, but they kind of had a good friendship going, Mike would probably show Brian what to wear and what to say so he could meet lyrically with Brian's music. He really got it right down to the ground and made it accessible. Mike is a very strong musical force. He's got, if you take all the Beach Boys hits, there's a Mike Love element in there. Ultimately, I think the Beach Boys have meant so much to so many people because of the positivity, and that was me. Brian was melancholy. I was Mr. Positive Thinker. So I complimented Brian's melancholy with my upbeatness. There are rumors around that this is Britain's revenge for the Boston Tea Party. We were told about this group from England um, called the Beatles. This rock and roll group has taken over as the kingpins of musical appreciation among the younger element. The success of the Beatles was like a, a huge, it was like if you were surfing and all of a sudden it comes a tidal wave. <laughs> it's kind of scary. We were very jealous, of course, of the Beatles. The Beatles, from moment one, enjoyed the freedom uh, and the free environment that the Beach Boys had created, you know, for pop bands at Capitol Records. It was very humbling, you know, because we had been, uh, on top there, you know, for that year or so before. The Beatles had the power of being the new novelty. Uh, I know it really uh, kind of challenged us in a way um, to uh, do as good as we could, uh, creatively speaking. <laughs> had number one hits right right on through that whole period but were somewhat overshadowed by this this invasion Brian was this you know really gifted composer and accepted and and in his listening to music accepted the challenge that he heard in other people's music I mean it's well known that he had this you know uh, love for Phil Spector's music and wanted to create something as original you know thought that he was somehow inferior to, to, to Phil Spector. I, I always thought it was absolutely the other, the other way around. Phil, Phil Spector was a very, very talented, crazy, but he had this layered sound thing, right? But Brian took that and used it um, in a delicate way. So it became beautiful. So it wasn't just angry. You know, and Phil's thing was anger. And, and Brian's was, was love. Brian was always looking for love. Two box guitars, an electric guitar, an electric bass, drums, and a stint, and a percussion. two sets of the same vocals on two different tracks in order to give it a resonance and a nice shrill resonant sound. to pull 
feelings together in, in his tunes, and none of us really knew what happened, uh, I mean, between his dad and, and, and himself, you know, because he, he wouldn't talk about his, his dad or anything bad. I think the business of the family was a really tough issue. You know, he was, it's kind of like, uh, we're not in Kansas anymore. Come on, Brian, knock it off. You got any guts? Let's hear it. I'll leave, Brian, if you're going to give me a bad time. Let's go. You know, they went from, uh, you know, being able to, you know, pay the rent or buy the food or whatever to becoming, you know, like an international icon thing. And and I think that his his father was a real problem for him. Murray was uh, a good manager. He was a good businessman because he kept the Beach Boys agenda on the front burn, more sophisticated, and, um, and they had to grow past the simplistic... Uh, image that they had, um, Murray's influence and his presence didn't work anymore. His presence was very big. He burst into a room, you know, and beat everyone up. <laughs> Murray would come in, and he really wanted to be the producer. Another word. Listen, syncopate a little. Oh. Uh, what are the words? Sing, I don't know. sing it. Since you put me down, I've been out doing it in my head. Right, sing, show him, me show me him how to do it just once, Dad. Let me sing it. Let me, here, sing it. Sing it. Since you put me down. No. Since you put me down, the boo dee dee ba ba dee dee ba dee da. Oh, why do you look so fine? Then I don't want to take much time. You got to help me find the help to get her out of my heart. But help me find the help, help me find the help. Help me find the help, help me find the I think there's also this rivalry the songwriting rivalry between he and Brian, because here, here he has been st a struggling songwriter all his life, and then his son comes along with his contemporary stuff, and it really sounds good. Brian, I'm a genius too, let's go, huh? Growing up, in terms of their sibling arrangement, I, I think uh, their father was a pretty rough guy. He was, he was tough on him. Well, he would go, get in there and kick butt. Get in there write number one song. Show me how good you are. You know, like that, and I'd say, all right, Dad, all right. And I'd go, and I would do it. Murray was very abusive, and I think that pretty much uh, uh, dealt some se severe self-worth issues to, to his sons. And it showed up in Brian in one way, and it showed up in Carl another way. He's, he and out of the way while Murray was beating on Dennis and berating, if not beating on Brian. What's the matter? You made too much money, buddy? Then Brian and I fired him as our manager uh, after a couple of years. He was insufferable. We finally said, look, we can't, we can't deal with you anymore. We've got to let you go you know, get a new man and get a new manager. Let me tell you something. Yes. When you guys get so big that you can't sing from your hearts, you're going downhill. 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 The West Coast has the sunshine and the girls all get so wouldn't it be nice to own all the great music from VH1's new Beach Boys documentary? Wow. To order your Endless Harmony CD, call 1-800-251-2900. Have your credit card ready. Or send $16.99 plus $4.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Get 25 previously unreleased songs, including new renditions of classic Beach Boys tunes like California Girls, Good Vibrations, and God Only Knows. The number again is 1-800-251-2900. Call now. Coming to the stage, one of the all-time greats. Three women. I'm Miss Frankie Lyman. I'm Mrs. Frankie Lyman. I am Mrs. Frankie Lyman. One husband. Frankie! Millions of dollars at stake. Am I to understand that there are three women claiming to be the widow of Frank Lyman deceased? <laughs> Halle Berry, Vivica A. Fox, Leela Rashan, Little Richard, and Lorenz Tate. Why do fools fall in love? You want me to get you some ice? Rated R. Starts Friday, August 28th at a theater near you. You can only survive in what you find in the forest. We'll meet in five days here. And good luck. The Honda CRV has its own picnic table, waterproof storage compartment, and two power outlets. For those times when you have to rough it. I love nature. For dry, red eyes, clear eyes is awesome. Unlike the other leading eye drop, it removes redness and has an ingredient to moisturize. Wow. 
The difference is clear. Clear eyes. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. If you ask us, it just tastes better. who all of a sudden was uh, created this industry. You know, we call it that. It was an industry. And that's not what he set out to do. You know, he took a little bit of Chuck Berry, a little bit of the four freshmen, put them together, and made this industry. And then one day, on an airplane, on a concert tour, he just lost it. He just couldn't do it anymore. Touring was a little bit tedious. You know, he had to hop a plane every day, you know. And I was having a little problem, mental mental problems on, on tour. I remember him crying one morning. And he said, I can't take it anymore, actually. It wasn't such a, a lovely, you know. He was, uh, I think he said he was having a nervous breakdown. He was frightened. Uh, just scared of the, the truth. Hmm. Yeah, I was terrified for my brother. When we got home from the 1964 tour, I, I quit. I told him I was going to stay home. And we're all sitting down on chairs, and I went, guys, I want to tell you something. And I told them all about how I did it. Mike got a tear, and Carl and Dennis were a little bit dismayed about it, you know. He just was not um, happy traveling. He was more of a homebody. He was, I think he felt safer in his own environment. Then Brian was able to stay home and focus on, on the music because he was getting scattered and, and just couldn't satisfy his dad. and. And, uh, and go out on the road and, and satisfy the music and satisfy himself. One of the session musicians that played guitar on, on our, uh, a lot of our earlier rock and roll uh, songs, uh, a guy named Glenn Campbell, uh, he joined our group for about six months. Carl and, uh, and Mike Love said, we want you to set, play bass and do Brian's part. And I said, you gotta be kidding me. It was awesome. Total screaming, just rah! and it was an experience I'll never. The Wichita Line Man, and so on. Terry Melcher and I started producing a band he had signed called the Rip Chords, and we started using their deal to do Beach Boy knockoffs. And I met all the guys in the Beach Boys, probably around '63. Fast forward a little bit with Mike Love phoning Bruce not to join the Beach Boys, but do you know anyone who could take Glenn Campbell's place who's taking Brian Wilson's place? So I called everyone I knew and I didn't find anybody, so I volunteered myself. And then a couple days later, Brian just said, why don't you come to the session? We're recording a song called California Girls. California Girl Session was very, very up. Everybody was really up. Carol Kay was playing her bass, and Larry Nexo was playing the organ, and Hell was on drums, and uh, the whole gang was there. We did really, and that was my favorite session I ever did. Someone hold my nose. Hold my nose. Just, just do it for me as this is a joke. That's so silly. All right, squeeze, squeeze. <laughs> You guys. Please come, girls are here. Oh, that's that's how, they, how it used to sound. <laughs> then, of course, he's not going to like that. <laughs> well, East Coast girls are hip. I really dig those styles they wear. And the Southern girls with the way they talk.
first tracks he played me, and this is prior uh, to the Pet Sounds album, he already had recorded from an idea that Al had. Uh, Al talked him into recording Sloop John B. Come on, the Sloop John B. My grandfather and me. And he says, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. He says, yeah, but I think I liked it. You know, so it's just a three chord song. I think maybe we should add a little dimension to it, you know, maybe make it into a Beach Boy song, you know. And it was magnificent, you know, to hear Sloop John B. come out of those speakers with that brilliant arrangement. You know, it was, there was just something so thrilling about it. We come on the Sloop John B. My grandfather and me. Around Nassau town we did roam. soul oh when i first heard it i flipped I, I said i want to make an album like that where all the songs seem to be like a collection of folk songs you know and uh, we did pet sounds after that and uh, pretty soon the music was changing evolving and there it was there's this masterpiece sitting there kind of an uncut gem and we're going wow hmm. what's up brian <laughs> <laughs> Good vibrations. I mean, I said, oh my goodness. When it comes to music videos, everyone's a critic. I think you dear. They look like the devil's children. Rock of Ages, the show the real critics call brilliant. Four stars. Terrific. Every Tuesday at 9, 8 central. Premiering this Tuesday, only on VH1. Wednesday, on an all-new South Park on Comedy Central, a chicken pox epidemic breeds mass hysteria. You know how after we spent the night at Kenny's house and you and Carmen got sick with chicken pox? Yeah? Dude, our parents sent us over there to get us sick. What are you talking about? They knew that staying at Kenny's house would make us sick, and they made us do it anyway. They did? <laughs> South Park, it's contagious. Watch a brand new episode followed by the Upright Citizens Brigade, an outrageous new show that finds comedy through chaos. Wednesday night, only at Comedy Central. At Studio 54, a small town kid and a big city girl who found a love worth fighting for. Don't forget how replaceable you are. Ryan Phillippe, Salma Hayek with Nev Campbell and Mike Myers. 54, later to Hawk starts fighting everywhere. Racist, not rageous. So loaded, you don't eat it, you survive it. Their music was Why truly magical. Introducing the Carpenters' love songs. Every time you are near. And now this all-new collection is available for the first time. They long to be close to you. With only 
The Carpenters Love Songs, an exquisite collection of 20 unforgettable hits. The songs and voice that defined a generation. This is the most cherished Carpenters collection ever. Now you can own the Carpenters Love Songs, 20 of their biggest and best loved hits. All the songs that bring back such great memories. This is the one Carpenters collection you'll want to own. Call now and get the Carpenters Love Songs on cassette or CD. To order the Carpenters Love Songs, call the number on your screen or send check or money order for $15.98 for cassette or $17.98 for CD to the address above. Rush delivery available. Call now. Matchbox 20. Live in Memphis. Saturday night, September 26th. Live at the Pyramid. Matchbox 20 with special guest Paula Cole. Pick up tickets on sale now through Ticketmaster Outlets or Phone Chime. Matchbox 20, September 26th at the Pyramid in Memphis. A Beaver production. sort of dumb and goofy and before it got too weird and spooky, you know, and maybe that's why everybody loves it so much, because it's the bit where it, where it all is right, you know? Wouldn't it be nice if we were older than we would have to wait so long? That sounds more of an advanced kind of a, of a, of a lyric idea, lyric idea, you know? It wasn't about cars, flashy ideas, it was more of an introspective album, but, you know, very, very good lyrics. Maybe if we think and wish and hope and pray it might come true. I didn't think that the majority of the songs they'd done, although they had done some songs that were not about certain. sense it was like what youth youthful people would talk about wouldn't it be nice if we could get married but they're young you know that whole idea about wouldn't it be nice if we could do this or that you know, but they're not quite old enough to be able to do it we knew that pet sounds was a very special record and to us it was more than a record it was a new place it was you know popular music coming to a new level i guess i just wasn't and the first time I really got what he was doing was God only knows. You know, it's like we talked about something very esoteric within like a family. A brother has a secret but allows you to know it in, in, in an art form. You know, it's just a, a very incredible piece of music. It's so brilliantly put together. And uh, I got to sing it. I may not always love you, but long as there are stars above you, you never need to doubt it. I'll make you so sure about it. God only knows what I'd be without you. If you should ever Thank you. 
took credit for the songs that I wrote because I knew that a higher force was with me when I was writing. And the initial reaction by the tower was, well, they wanted the more commercial type, safe, number one hits and stuff. They didn't get into Brian's crazy music, you know, uh, where as you'd have a couple of hits and you'd finish off the album normally. They didn't understand that this album was was one complete thought and they just did not get it. They were nonplussed to say the least. Didn't understand it. We're only really interested in, in, in promoting the the stereotypes that we had become and, and it didn't understand. At the time it was disappointing because we didn't have the, the immediate rise to the top of the charts that we had hoped for. But artistically uh, it blew a lot of minds in a lot of uh, very music sensitive places, like in England, for instance. Just as Rubber Soul influenced Pet Sounds, McCartney and John Lennon said, and they actually, they went to a, a, a Pet Sounds party. There was a listening party uh, in England, and they went to it. And they went back and, uh, and started uh, composing songs in, in the spirit of Pet Sounds, here, there, and everywhere, is a perfect example. Literally inspired by Pet Sounds. Ult ultimately, um, uh, Sergeant Pepper was for the Beatles to get more experimental. And that's what Paul, Paul and the Beatles were trying to do. They were trying to write really good songs and then they heard what Brian Wilson was doing and it was just like, wait a second, we haven't even started here. Like we aren't even using like nine chords and major sevens yet. And here, you know, the Beach Boys are using them as if it's like no problem, you know, as if they're just, you know, easy. But the Beach Boys were using voicings and chords that were way beyond what everybody else was doing. Brian got the sense, and this happened in an incremental way, that anything was possible. And he took the psychedelic idioms that were popular in the mid-60s, and he put them together with a new level of pop ambition. Good vibrations? My mom said that uh, dogs pick up vibrations from people. Dogs will bark at some people, but not other people, because they see something that threatens them. So, I wrote a song called Good Vibrations. I love colorful And the way jazz feel, see. And the fact that they sung on top of that jazz feel, I mean, it was very cohesively jazz. And then I came up with the part, I'm picking up good vibrations. He had all the other, the, the track and the good, 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 good vibrations. Yeah, he had all that, but he didn't have the, I'm picking up good vibrations. She's, and the reason I chose to come up with that part, first of all, I went with the bass line, but second of all, the track was so weird. <laughs> Everything else up until that time was like, I get around, fun, 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 help me, Rhonda, surfing USA. And then all of a sudden, eh, good vibrations. I mean, with the, the weird, mystical sounding track. And I said, oh my goodness, the, the, our fans, the people out, the public is, is going to freak out when they hear this. They're not going to get this. So what I did is I said, well, the one thing that everybody understands is, is boy-girl attraction. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me excitation. So I wrote it from a boy-girl perspective. And we would come in here sometimes for 10 minutes, 15. 
15 minutes, and that would be it. And other times we'd be in here for four, five, six, seven hours. Yeah, that was uh, uh, very uh, schizophrenic, that recording. And it was recorded in many different studios, uh, three to be exact, and then spliced together. Everyone that heard it said that's the number one record. It was so flipped, they were so excited and so into it. And they, they guaranteed me that it would be a number one record, and it was. He was now shattered, afraid, paranoid, in his room, wouldn't come out, couldn't do anything. More acting debuts. Dad, you said I could have a cow of my own. Can I have this one? More singing debuts. And of course, more yodeling. More moments they'd rather forget. I'm proud to say I'm a warrior. Tuesday at 8, 7 Central, only on VH1, where music comes first. So Jan and I are having lunch, and we noticed this striking woman. I mean, she could have been a model. She was wearing this great lipstick. It was a hot new color. I gotta ask you, uh, where'd you get that lipstick? Right in. And so I buy it, and I try it, and I hate it. But Rite Aid's got that risk-free cosmetics money-back guarantee, so I got my money back, and I bought that great lipstick. Where'd you get it? Rite Aid. Really? Rite Aid. It's not just a store. It's a solution. Some people think they can max out their credit cards, buy things they can't afford, and they won't have anything to worry about. They're right. If you max out your credit cards and buy things you can't afford, you won't have anything to worry about. Get the facts. Visit credittalk.com. At Studio 54, a small town kid and a big city girl. Replaceable you want. Ryan Phillippe, Salma Hayek with Nev Campbell and Mike Myers. 54, later to Hawk starts Friday everywhere. From the right. I'm a young king, but I am king. Then be a good king. Man of courage made a choice between loyalty and treason. These are my friends. They have good reason to be happy, because their college IDs are now worth 10% off cool stuff at Pier 1. So get smart. Head to Pier 1 and get what you need. Just show your ID for 10% off. Pier 1 Imports. Zyban is here. Prescription medicine, only available from your doctor. Ask your doctor about Zyban. Call 1-888-650-PILL to find out more. Zyban. Now you have another choice. Who are you? I was hired by your roommate. Well, out of my way, I want a Bud Light. I don't think so. This is ridiculous. I live here. Sorry. You ain't on the list. List? Is there a problem, Bruno? It's nothing I can't handle. That's what I like to hear. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Now am I on your list? Let's see. Nope. Nation can't seem to get enough of new all-white meat chicken gorditas. Hearty flatbread cradles tender slices of grilled chicken so juicy it could start its own gossip column. And it's all thanks to the dream of a young dog named... Well, his name's not important. It's his winning charm, good looks, and undying love for chicken. What did you think I dream about? Girls? We had started getting uh, indications that Brian was taking some um, hallucinogens, like uh, LSD and stuff like that. Well, most of the guys, a lot of the writers were doing it at the time, but it took a tremendous toll uh, from him. Uh, he, he drove me around the parking lot of William Morris about 20 times, uh, explaining to me about, the, about this great trip he had just taken, you know? Um, and I just I didn't want to know about it. I wanted the innocence. Of all the people I ever met in the rock and roll business, no one ever approached Brian Wilson in terms of talent or complete unpredictability. The Smile album. 
had the brilliant little track sections that he never connected. And then he abandoned Smile. Smile is unbelievable. It's the most amazing thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Music bites. Now he wrote that with Van Dyke, who he met at my house. And Van Dyke was working on Bird's records. And all Christ, he was working on Paul Revere and the Raiders records you know, as well. And Van Dyke was a great esoteric and still is. Hi. Did I ever work for the Beach Boys? Yes. For an Easterner, uh, working for the Beach Boys is a real Californian experience. You know, I hit, hit it off very well. He, he, we wrote real fast, you know. We worked real quick and wrote a lot of quick songs real fast. Now, why do you want to talk to me about that? Well, I like Van Dyke, of course. He's a nice person. But I asked him once, I said, Van Dyke, what does that lyric mean? He says, I don't know. I haven't a clue. I said, exactly. <laughs> I've been in this town so long that back in the city, I've been taken for lost and gone and unknown for a long, long time. He said, now that's a sentence. I've been in this town so long and back in the city. of Brian Wilson singing Surf's Up with the piano. I think it was on a Leonard Bernstein special or something. And it's like having a record of Mozart singing. Surf's up, for a tidal wave. Come about hard and join the young and up in spring you gave such an amazing tune. I mean, the words are, are very much of the time. They sound beautiful when sung, and quite a lot of that is true of most of the songs that come from this period where there, obviously there was a stress and strain in, in realizing the music. I didn't resonate well with what was going on at that time. He was writing these songs under the influence of various substances, and it didn't make any sense to me. A point was reached where, where Brian just kind of, you know, all of us, just kind of just just uh, heaved a big sigh and kind of, uh, and stopped. I just threw it away, I junked it. I thought it was inappropriate music for us to make. I heard the word, wonderful thing, a children's song. It was an unfinished project in every sense. And it, it feels like a novel with a few chapters missing, you know? It feels actually almost like a, an adventure story with a few chapters missing. Some of the fans like that kind of stuff from the, the smile, and the, but see, I associate it too directly. I'm too subjective about it. At one time, in the early to mid 60s, Brian was very dynamic, resourceful, creative, disciplined in the studio. He was now shattered, afraid, paranoid, in his room, wouldn't come out, couldn't do anything. He started to spend more time in his upstairs in the bedroom. Heroes and the Villains was a very powerful track, very dynamic. That was the last of the super dynamism from Brian, I think. That was 1967. <laughs> I think that meditation uh, 
as opposed to drugs, the, the result of promiscuous drug taking is pretty evident in the lives of the people who have done, done that. But with meditation, it's given me a way to relax. My first thought during my first meditation was, first of all, that it was so simple that anyone could do it. And second of all, that if it was so deeply relaxing that if everyone did it, it would be an entirely different world. My trip with Nia with the Beatles in early 60, it was one of the most fascinating time periods of my life. Clear air of Rishikesh, North India, Kathy News reports from the meditation retreat of Maharishi Maharish Yogi. The man who, through transcendental meditation, is currently bringing peace of mind to the Beatles. Paul came down with his acoustic guitar playing. Flew in from Miami Beach, B-O-A-C, didn't get to bed last night. I said, wow, that's pretty cool, that's neat. And he says, yeah, it's sort of like a, a Beach Boy style. But you know, <laughs> I said, well, you know what you ought to do then is talk about all the girls around Russia in the bridge part of Moscow chicks and Ukraine girls and all that. Back in the US, back in the US. This is Jeopardy. What is, I touch myself? This is Jeopardy, VH1's rock and roll Jeopardy. A new show from the creators of Jeopardy. Every Saturday night at 8, only on VH1, where music means more than videos. Stories Behind the Music Week is sponsored by germ-killing Listerine. Don't let a good mouth go bad. By Maxwell House Coffee, always good to the last drop. And by Clairol Herbal Essences Shampoos and Conditioners. Even with a whole new world of toothbrushes, you still may not reach the places between teeth where germs that can cause the gum disease gingivitis breed. But with Listerine, you can. Listerine is the one brand, the only brand, clinically proven to flow into the tiny spaces between teeth to kill germs and help prevent gum disease. Germs can hide from your toothbrush, but not from Listerine. Don't let a good mouth go bad. Fisher. I design cars for Volkswagen. But I like to drive them. Marketing people ask me to design a special driver's car. I thought, well, I'll design it like my car. The spoiler, alloy wheels, CD player, on standard. My wife thinks they should call it the Walter Fisher edition. They said they'd think about it. The road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. At America's top university, the most gifted mind belongs to the guy who cleans the floors. I need someone who can get through to them. Now he's met the one man who can change his life forever. Let's let the healing begin. Coming to pay-per-view, the winner of two Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay and Best Supporting Actor Robin Williams. You are bound by nothing. Siskel and Ebert gave it two big thumbs up. Robin Williams, Matt Damon, and Minnie Driver. I love you. Goodwill Hunting, coming to pay-per-view, rated R. Does your facial moisturizer feel like a heavy mask? Introducing new Jergens Protective Moisture Lotion with vitamin E to nourish your face and SPF 15 to protect it. So light, you forget it's even there. New Jergens Face Care, nourishment for your face. 
Just because other cleaners are blue like Windex doesn't mean they can clean glass like Windex. Windex with ammonia D leaves a beautiful streak-free shine just about anyone can appreciate. Windex, best on glass. What if you could have a deodorant soap that goes beyond fresh and clean all the way to soft? You can. Fresh Deodorant Caress has clean rinsing moisturizers for skin that feels soft and smooth. Plus, there's gentle deodorant protection to leave you feeling clean and shower fresh. Discover the difference for yourself. Call us and we'll send you a full-size bar absolutely free. Fresh Deodorant Caress with rich moisturizers and gentle deodorant protection that lasts and lasts. Fresh Deodorant Caress. Discover how you can feel this soft, this clean, this shower fresh. Experience the difference for yourself. Call now for your free full-size Fresh Deodorant Caress Bar. I went surfing with a friend of mine. I swear that line, it's automatic when I talk with old friends, uh, comes because I went with a high school friend, went surfing, I came back, the Navy and stuff with my old friend Bill Jackson, and it was fantastic, it was beautiful, it was great, and we ought to write a song about it. We call it Do It Again, you know? So we just, he sat on the piano and pounded it out. And it's automatic when I talk with old friends, that was probably the best collaboration we ever did. It's promotion somewhere around 1967 was the number one surfing group in the USA. It was completely ridiculous in light of the fact that there's, you know, things like the Vietnam War and, and uh, student demonstrations going on. We were almost drafted, all of us, detained by the FBI uh, due to his stance on, on the Vietnam War. We're very irrelevant, unpopular guys at that point because on the I want to be cool level how could you possibly connect the Beach Boys to that I think to become really huge at some point is in it in itself the thing that's going to keep people from liking you at some other point because at other at some point it's just the pendulum swing at some point it seems like oh that old thing or that thing that we used to dig I just kind of ignored uh, you know people turning their backs on the Beach Boys in America around the world uh, we were selling out, people jumping up and down, going crazy. I thought being all over the world was a pretty interesting thing for some guys that are washed up at 27 years old.
promptly after we put the studio in his house. Brian didn't want to leave his home, or he didn't want to um, get out of bed lots of days, so it was an attempt to bring the music to Brian. We were all basically uh, hanging out at his place, minus Brian. something that he, he thought should be changed or he wanted to had an idea about then he would come down and appear in his pajamas <laughs> and uh, and do it well we just took up the gauntlet we just went forward Carl became more involved and, and Dennis and myself Carl would put his voice in where Brian should have Carl gained confidence and confidence in Brian's eyes. We did things like Do It Again and I Can Hear Music. In fact, I Can Hear Music, uh, I think, was that on the 2020 album? I Can Hear Music, Brian didn't even sing on it. That was like the first track he didn't sing on. This is the He was head of Warner's, and so the Sunflower album came out in Warner Brothers, and that's my favorite, favorite Beach Boys album, because when I close my eyes and think about it, I remember the times, uh, I remember the great engineer Steve Desper doing it with us. They were uh, certainly assured of themselves, and they knew where they were going with their music. I know. <laughs> Alan and I went into the vaults and got the water, 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 water. Ooh. Brian rose to the occasion. It was all any engineer could do to keep up with Brian. He would fly around the studio, and, and I would chase him with microphones. So cool, so cool. I, mean, I love that song. I love it. Great experience, except in sales. I mean, that's probably the 
the biggest failure of any Beach Boys album and my favorite. Sunflower, in my mind, uh, is as good in its own way as Pet Sounds. Pet Sounds was Brian's personal record. Sunflower was them coming back to being a band again. You know, personal statement, band statement. Pet Sounds, Sunflower. You know, neither of them sell, both of them magnificent. So hard to share the life of before. The Sunflower album, we had to kind of force Brian to come into the studio. I think that the last great Brian Wilson song is Till I Die in the Surf's Up album. In terms of the Beach Boys, the great counterpoint harmonies, uh, the incredible lyrics. Well, it was all about being humble. It's really what it was, you know. It's like making a mockery of how small I was in the, in the world, you know. I think people relate to that too, you know, can, can understand what that means. I'm a cork on the ocean, floating over the raging sea. How deep is the ocean? How deep is the ocean? I lost my way. Hey, hey, Too green. Karaoke. Too hokey. Then I said try 10, 10, 3, 2, 1. Too new. Saves cash on every call in the U.S. Too... every call? Quick or long. How much? 50% off calls over 20 minutes. Half price? Great international rates, too. I can call Paris? We oui, miss you. Right now? Don't have to switch phone companies. Right here? Just dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1, then the number is usual. This is easy. Why didn't I try this sooner? Don't push your luck. Stubborn. New Revlon Moisture Stay Lip Color. Moisture technology like never before. And the moisture stays in your lips, even after I take the color off. New Moisture Stay, with vitamin C and moisture that stays hour after hour. So my lips stay soft, stay moisturized, even after I take the color off. All new Revlon Moisture Stay Lip Color. Do it for your lips. Revlon. Before you make another move, before you take another step, think about this. Feeling fresh isn't enough. With fresh deodorant caress, you'll feel your softest too. It has a deodorant and a clean rinsing moisturizer, so you get all the deodorant protection you want, plus softer skin. Deodorant freshness, plus caress softness. It's a feeling like never before. Before you dress, caress. It's a 
new South Park on Comedy Central. A chicken pox epidemic breeds mass hysteria. You know how after we spent the night at Kenny's house and then you and Carmen got sick with chicken pox? Yeah? Dude, our parents sent us over there to get us sick. What are you talking about? They knew that staying at Kenny's house would make us sick, and they made us do it anyway. They did? <laughs> South Park, it's contagious. Watch a brand new episode followed by the Upright Citizens Brigade, an outrageous new show that finds comedy through chaos. Wednesday night, only at Comedy Central. We had a, a resurgence uh, capital we released the uh, Endless Summer package, double album, sold. Basically, uh, a new audience to to uh, uh, that discover the Beach Boys. See, we did Anaheim Stadium for the first time in 1974 or five. Brian was not back in the band on the road at that time, right? He didn't want to travel yet. And so he was sitting back in the bleachers that we had for our guests, right behind the stage. And these young girls were singing Surfer Girl with us when we were doing it on the show. And it blew them away because they knew all the words. And they weren't born yet. And it was out the first time. Quite a few shows with the Beach Boys in the middle 70s, 74, 75 in particular. Uh, the first time we opened for them and we stayed for the show, the thing I was most impressed with was how many hit songs they played right in a row where we knew, you know, you knew the, all the words to all the songs and they just kept coming boom, boom, one after another. isolated himself and, and it was nice to see him back. I wanted to be part of it again, share with him and experience uh, people. I wanted to experience people and make money of course. As an observer of the Brian's Back campaign, brilliant and bogus. We forced him to stay you know, years longer than creatively I think he wanted to stay. The road just isn't, a, the, at least at that time, wasn't a place that agreed with Brian. It's as simple as that. I, I, I you know, he just wasn't that comfortable in front of large audiences and, uh, uh, you know, a little stage fright and, uh, you know, uh, he really did his best, I think. Brian did go through that Brian's back album period, the 15 big ones and all that, and then uh, then a period of decline after that. I was drinking a lot of booze and, you know, I needed it to, the, to numb some of my emotional pain. I did get over it, that's true. I did because I, I had to. You know, my, a doctor of mine said, look, you're going to have to do it now or you'll never do it. So I did it. Finally, last year, Beach Boys manager Tom Hewlett turned to psychologist Dr. Gene Landy, who had worked with Brian before, for help. He had a year or two to live, and he had died. He was, he was, he was, Tom Hewlett called me in and said, and said, we are worried that Brian Wilson is going to follow Elvis. Oh, God, no. Yeah, that's what Tom said to me. He said, we've got to do something. We can't let him just stay 300 pounds. Don't you know that? America, America, the Beach Boys along the way became America's band. Empire, 19, 
72, I'd say 71, 72. But the highlight of the show, because Brian Wilson wasn't on the tour, but the highlight of the, the show was Dennis Wilson. And uh, it's still one of my favorite performances of anybody I've ever seen. Dennis Wilson's talents were highly underrated. All of a sudden he started to shine. He sort of came into his own, you know, and he could produce, he could write, produce, and arrange a little bit and sing. Uh, let me play you something that probably no one's heard that Dennis wrote that I still, I, I probably haven't played it right and he's going to kill me. was a guy that was not recognized for the gift that he had. I never went to school and found anybody that could write that in college. Barbara, gently smiling for me. Tender and warm. Shining with love. And I love you. I love you, love you, God I do. Passionate, intense, um, self-destructive, but he was really empty inside and so had this insatiable appetite for whatever it was, whether it was writing, whether it was drugs, whether it was sex, um, adulation. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love the idea of making people happy or smile. I buy, uh, it's like a drug, I guess. Some people are addicted to uh, alcohol, others to whatever it may be. I'm addicted to uh, looking at that, that person and knowing that they, they're entertained. I mean, Dennis Wilson and Keith Moon, we're like, you know, what rock and roll legendary crap is all about. Are you ready? <laughs> I think it was a product of his childhood that he was a rebel. He rebelled against the authority and the abusiveness of Murray, the mixed messages he was always getting as a child, and, and he continued to rebel. My brother, and he's my brother, Dennis Wilson, let's hear it. I mean, we had to kick him out of the group a couple, three times for him to go sober up enough so that he could play the drums. It really scared me. I, I was, you know, I thought, oh, my God, something someday is going to really happen to Dennis, and he won't be here. It had to be, and so it was like, he's finally killed himself. He's finally going to be at peace somewhere, you know? In truth, I felt he died way before his actual body died. If I could live my life again, I'd never do you wrong. You better know, oh, if I just had a chance again to spend my life with you. It's in my soul oh. I'd be standing by his side Not to ever let you go this morning because of the tragic loss of our brother and friend Dennis Wilson and uh, we know that Dennis would like us to continue in the spirit and tradition of the Beach Boys Let's go surfing now Everybody's learning how
late 80s and the 90s, I think it's kind of smooth sailing, you know? I thought Kokomo was really great. Our biggest song in 22 years since Good Vibrations. Recently, uh, talking with Brian, he thought he was excluded. I felt he had been excluded from it by us. Brian was called and asked to uh, be a part of Kokomo, but um, Landy controlled his every movement, and Landy would not let him record unless Landy was a co-producer or a co-writer. Jock Landy was an absolute control freak. I mean, he, he was bound and determined to be Brian's partner. Landy told us he would be involved with Brian on a 24-hour day basis for a year and a half, possibly two, but that, at that point in time, Brian would be self-sufficient enough and uh, well enough to, to fire him. But it didn't happen that way. It became year after year. The years grew and grew longer, and, and Landy just uh, took advantage of uh, Brian isolated him from his family and the group and uh, it just we kept losing brian i've always felt that gene landy wanted to be a rock star and his vehicle was brian wilson he was a genius at how to figure out dependent people's personalities and how to you know manipulate them towards wellness uh he was he became dependent himself thank goodness he he's not uh, associated with him anymore Landy was fired. Ultimately, if Carl Wilson and the Beach Boys managers and Brian's wife at the time, Marilyn, hadn't cared about saving Brian's life, Brian wouldn't be here today. It was their caring that saved Brian's life. If it hadn't been one doctor, it would have been another doctor. But I am telling you right now, the Wilson family cared enough about Brian to save his life in some way. And it's true, we've had our, we've had our moments and our ups and downs. And, uh, of course, we were all born to make each other crazy, you know, as they say. From cotton picker to country superstar, Johnny Cash writes songs with plain-spoken integrity and an outlaw and philosophy. Just to watch him die. A legacy as colorful as his lyrics. To a burning ring of fire. And demons as black as his clothes. I didn't ever kick the drug habit, and I don't think I ever will. Get rhythm. Sinner, saint, songwriter, Johnny Cash is a legend. His story is only on VH1. Next. The Amazon is the largest river in the <clears throat> world. Turn off your oven and stay cool with Hot Pockets. Crispy crust and tender flaky crust. Only Hot Pockets has an oven baked taste from the microwave. Your favorite Hot Pockets fillings inside a crispy crusty tender flaky crust. What are you gonna pick this summer? Hot Pockets! Crispy crusty tender flaky crust. For cleaning, shining, and disinfecting. Clean and shine, shine and clean. Nothing outperforms us in the bathroom. Scrubbing Bubbles Bathroom Cleaner. We work hard so you don't have to. future of fashion. Old Navy surplus pants. So chic. 
I must have some. <laughs> They're charming. For adults, for kids, for the whole family. Surplus pants for everyone. Magic, you're the master of fashion. Observe my precious little pumpkin. Would I ever mislead this adorable bundle of joy? Is the earth round? You see, he's totally into this V8 taste of fruit juices. So would I tell him only Splash has 100% of both vitamins A and C? That it's good for him because it's from V8? Nah. Especially when I'm about to suggest that maybe he take a baseball. V8 Splash. To health, happiness, and harmony. What if you could have a deodorant soap that goes beyond fresh and clean all the way to soft? You can. Fresh Deodorant Caress has clean, rinsing moisturizers for skin that feels soft and smooth. Plus, there's gentle deodorant protection to leave you feeling clean and shower fresh. Discover the difference for yourself. Call us, and we'll send you a full-size bar absolutely free. Fresh Deodorant Caress with rich moisturizers and gentle deodorant protection that lasts and lasts. Fresh Deodorant Caress. Discover how you can feel this soft, this clean, this shower fresh. Experience the difference for yourself. Call now for your free full-size Fresh Deodorant Caress bar. We, we don't harmonize, you know, like we used to, but if, we ever, if I ever got a chance, I would, I, I would love to harmonize with these guys. I can hear music, I can hear music, we Everything. It's really tough to hear every little note that every little instrument's playing, but somehow he did. That time we just do the second half of the bridge. If you hit a bad note in the show, it, chances were Carl, Carl would be the one to hear it. And you, you, know, you, you didn't want to get that look from Carl, you know? <laughs> in the middle of the show, it's like... He's our conscious entity there, making sure everything was just right. He was always the stabilizing force and um, kind of the model of what, at least my brother and myself, what we try and pattern ourselves after. And um, just, he was very real. him because I know he's, he was like one of our main men. It's a, an amazingly uh, difficult concept uh, to think of the Beach Boys without Carl Wilson because uh, his voice was so important to the, the makeup of the harmonies. <laughs> Push it, okay. push it, that's it. <laughs> and 
This is a baby music. For my baby. Who just completed a new album called Imagination. All, all I can say is just I'm very proud of it. Happy days are here. will recall that we made quite a contribution to modern American music and stuff. And so I'm proud to be a part of that. I think it took a you know, contribution of their music. What they did was so superior to what anybody else attempted in, in rock and roll. Great teachers on feel. And, and great teachers of soul music. Not, I don't mean black soul, I'm talking about from the heart. I can't be depressed if I listen to the Beach Boys. Happy times together we I mean, I listen to it every day. To bring spiritual love, unconditional, not, not you know, like, not any one person, but just an open, unconditional love. Paul McCartney did it with Let It Be, you know. We did it with Surfer Girl. We could. 